We're on our way to Sebastian Inlet, and we're going to stop by and get some bait here across. It's about maybe two hours, 20 minutes from where we are, um, but stopping to get bait uh, is going to take us a little longer. But we've never been down here. We're going to try it. Uh, I ran into some uh, gentleman from that was fishing probably a couple weeks ago. Um, we were fishing uh, um, inshore uh, on surf, but uh, he said that the, it's good fishing down here. So we wanted to come down here and give it a try. Finally made it. Hello. How are you doing? Pretty good. So where do you park to go fishing out at the inlet here? There's three different parking lots. If you can find a spot, parking lot one, if you're going to go out on the jetty, that would be the closest to it. Parking lot one? Yeah, as soon as you go under the bridge. Okay. Look for a spot. Okay, thank you. Take care. It's $8 to get in here per vehicle. So it's not too bad. I guess. And they told us to park on underneath the bridge, or not underneath the bridge, but on this side to go fishing out at the uh, the jetty. I've never been out here, so we gotta figure this out. Here's a good look at the inlet. As you can see here, you see water running out, but as you get closer to the end, you'll see water trying to run back in. And when you get to the end, that the part where the water is trying to come out and go in is pretty rough, as you can see right here. And as you can see, there's as as you get further, further along towards the end, there's more and more people. Oh, there's a busy place. Yeah. Looks like there's space in between people, but because of all the poles and the lines, there's not that much space. So we just got out here. And as you can see around, there's a lot of people out here fishing. So, I mean, people are just coming up and taking, I mean, this guy right over here, just come up and he saw me setting down, but just come out and threw his line out. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. It may, be, it may be great fishing here, but it may be just a pain in the butt to deal with everybody here. So, we'll see how it goes. So, stay tuned. So, I'm using my 12 foot, actually 12 or 13 foot pole which is normally for surf. I just brought it here to use it the first time. I got my Yvette reel, my MXL, actually Yvette reel, conventional reel. So I'm just really out here using it as kind of testing and, and working with it as well. So we'll see what happens. I'm getting used to a conventional reel still, so I keep practicing. That was a bad cast. Man, that's you. Uh, I gotta do this again. Tell me what kind of fish this is, jumping out of the water. Here, let's slow it down for you so you can see it a little bit better. Nice. Can I get one of those? <laughs> can I snake one of them? Yeah, sure. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna try that too. I didn't... Thank you, man. Thank you. Got a live one this time. I got my live mullet. I'm gonna throw him in, hook it underneath the, the fin here. Okay, we're ready to go. I'm gonna throw him out. Here's a neighborhood pier. We're just waiting for you to leave your top off uh, bait bucket or, or something so it can come over there and either grab your fish or your shrimp. See? They're smart. They ate the middle, but left the hook. Oh well. Next time. Oh, no. I got... I got this guy in the way. Oh, it's a big old cat. Oh, he's gonna get me. Oh, there we go. I got him. Alright. Got my first fish. Catfish. Not what I wanted. But it's something to start with. They're starting to bite now. I'm gonna throw it back because it's a catfish. There we go. Here it goes. Back in the water. As you look at the south side of the pier, you can see there's not many people fishing over and, and there's a reason. There's a lot more rocks, pylons you can get uh, snagged on. As you can see, it's pretty rough on this side. That doesn't mean people don't fish. You can see 
A lot of people fishing at the end of the pier on the south side, but that's at the end of the pier. And you can see this guy caught a large snook. So there was people catching large fish down at the end of the pier, whether it's on the south or the north or, you know, just in the middle casting east. But that's where most of the people were. And you can see this guy caught a large grouper on the south side down near the end of the pier. But you won't see closer towards the beginning of the pier, you won't see a lot of people fishing along there just because you have a tendency to get snagged a lot more rocks, like I said. And as you can see, this guy's going to throw it back in the water. So we were curious about what was down underneath the pier, so we decided to drop our 3D camera down there. And as you can see, lots of group are down underneath this pier. They were curious about the camera, looking at it, swimming around it, even bumping up against it. But there was a lot of fish down there. For some reason, we weren't having the luck, but they're down there. I found out that uh, you can't leave your poles alone. Um, everything is actually supposed to be in the center so, so people can walk by. Um, so um, I couldn't just go up there, walk back and leave my poles alone because I guess there's people that'll call and they'll come out here and talk to you about it and stuff like that. So um, I guess they do have rules. Uh, it's good to keep stuff in the center so people can walk by, but it's the first I knew of it. So I just moved back down here. And somebody across there got a fish, or he's, he's trying to get it in. Hey, lady fish, lady, lady fish. fish, lady fish. This gentleman over here was fishing on the south side, and as you, you can catch stuff on the south side, you just have to be careful about getting snagged uh, a lot. Anyway, he caught a pretty large ladyfish. Uh oh, I'm gotten on my. Oh, it's a blue. Yeah, it's nice Uh-oh, I gotta pull this up, Mom. Your lines. Are... Oh. Oh, man. I lost it. Oh, well. Do it again. Here's another gentleman that was actually fishing on the at the end of the pier near the south side, and he hooked a pretty large shark. It looked like it was a, a black tip. It may be a black tip, but it could be something else. But because uh, there's two sharks that look similar, um, a black tip, and I believe the anal fin of black tip is white, but the other tips are black. Uh, but there's another shark that is very similar, where it does have the anal fin is actually black. Um, but regardless, it does look like a black tip, and uh, you can see that in the water here. He didn't land it though, but it's a nice catch. And here's our nice catch. I think we caught the smallest fish on the pier today. So our overall experience here is it's okay, although it is our first time here. Usually it looks like a lot of people are using uh, live fish, um, live mullet, uh, live pins, other things. Um, that's usually what they're throwing out. Some people are using shrimp. Um, but most people are using live fish around here and you can see them running in the water and I tried to use the net to catch them, no luck. But it is very crowded out here. Um, some of the rules, um, I, I, I guess every um, pier has rules so you, you just got to adhere to them. So, you know, just remember it's $8 to get in here and then it's, it's pretty crowded. You'll, you'll have to find a space and if you bring a bunch of stuff, you got to put it in the middle. But typically, I, what the guy told me, he's, you can't leave your poles alone. Um, so if you move back and forth, you, you cannot leave your poles alone because people, I, I guess, from what he told me, people get in fights over this stuff, especially when they're catching big fish. Um, they have to go over other people's poles and nobody's there, you know. Um, so that's what I've been told. But overall, it's okay. We didn't have much luck, but uh, I, I am sure that if you come out here Statistically, if you come out here all the time, you're going to catch, you know, decent uh, fish or decent sized fish. But today, we just didn't have any luck. So until next time, see ya.